Ugreen has released a behemoth of a power adapter, 300 watts in one box. Is there anything special about this box, and what can it do? 300 watts is a lot of power adapter. In fact, it's the biggest power adapter I've tested on this channel. I'm not sure I understand why this many watts are needed in one adapter, but maybe by the end of this video, I'll get the point. I wonder if this adapter has better power negotiation or if it has better performance with all the extra space in the box. I will be testing this adapter on both 230 and 120 volts to see the performance for most places in the world. For the price of this power adapter, I expect great things. This is going to be an interesting one, so join me as I try to find out how good this power adapter is. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. Okay, here it is. The Ugreen 300 watt 5 port PD GAN fast charger Nexode CD333. This adapter comes in a big giant box with all kinds of plastics and bits. They took the green out of greenwashing, or does that put the green in greenwashing? No idea. Anyway, the adapter itself looks huge. It comes with a 3 pin power cable, so earth pin to check out, and a 240 watt 6 foot USB C to C cable. This is tested in the list of cables on the All Things One Place website for USB cables. The power adapter comes with a user manual which covers the basics for power specifications and port sharing. I pulled this from the Amazon page for how the different ports distribute power. We will check out the negotiation on these a little later. The adapter itself has four USB-C ports and one USB-A port. USB-C ports are labeled with power levels so you know which port can deliver more and which less. The back of the adapter shows something we haven't seen from Ugreen before, a US and Canada safety listing through TUV SUD. I like that. It also has the DOE 6 mark for efficiency, which is surprising for a 300 watt charger. Something to check out for sure. So let's plug it in and find out what it can do. The first thing I see with this power adapter is it has high idle power consumption, but being a 300 watt device, the idle power consumption actually meets the requirements. Remember, it's like taking 300 watt adapters together, so it's actually not that bad even if number look big. For modes of operation, the adapter has 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt fixed USB 3.1 power delivery modes on the USB-C ports, and the top USB-C port has an extra EPR mode delivering a 28 volt mode also. This can go up to 140 watts on the one port. The power adapter also has a programmable power supply mode or variable voltage mode, which can be more efficient for charging of 21 volts, and this can go up to 4 amps, so this will probably not work with 45 watt Samsung super fast charging, but should work with the 25 watt. The power negotiation is a big improvement on this adapter. The power appears to share in a different way. The ports stay on until the power is needed on another port or too many plugs are connected. So I tested powering up the 140 watt port, then plugging in the 100 watt port and fully loading both. Then I went ahead and plugged in another load on the third port and loaded that to 60 watts to get the full 300 watt load and no renegotiation happened. Only when going to plugging in a fourth device does it renegotiate, but only the 100 watt port since it now drops the power level of just that port, the others stay on. Now in the long term will this stay on? I don't know. So with any USB-C and PD device, it isn't made to power devices all the time, it is still a charger. First up is the 120 volt data on this one, and it is quite good. The power adapter is among the most efficient power adapters on the market. It shows progress in power adapters achieving 92% efficiency at its peak. The power is clean, the voltages are all spot on, and the voltage ripple in the output is very stable. It is surprisingly good actually. For the DC output, this may be the best I've seen in terms of being on the value it is supposed to be and holding that value right up to the full load. The power adapter was switched over to 230 volts next and the data at this point is even better efficiency wise. And something else that is nice to see is that the power factor correction circuit is very effective on 230 volts and that helps make this the best adapter for the 230 volt market that I've seen. Under the heaviest loads, this almost achieves perfect marks, but at 30 watts, it is a little bit off. Overload is testing when the device safely shuts down when too much power is drawn. This can happen from a short circuit or a misbehaving device. The adapter tripped at 110 watts for the 100 watt ports and 146 watts for the 140 watt port. These are both very safe overload points. Power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. At 300 watts, this adapter really needs it. The goal is to have all the waves look the same shape as the yellow one, a side one. The power adapter has it and it is on all the time. Here is a comparison of the Rokerin and the Ugreen doing 100 watts on the output. You can clearly see one of these doesn't look like the others shape-wise. 
If you scaled this up to three adapters, it actually saves real money. Still probably not enough to pay for this thing though. In terms of the performance figures, at full power, this thing looks good. The wave shape is clean and the performance is good. At lower powers, this adapter does turn the PFC on and off rapidly. I didn't hear any noise, but this is a common symptom of noise from power adapters. The power adapter connects the USB output pins directly to the earth pin. This is common on a lot of equipment, but not so common on USB power adapters. Some will have a resistor in the path or something else, but this is damn near on zero ohms. So take it or leave it. It is allowed for a metal bodied equipment to be connected to the earth pin. There are situations where this can be dangerous, like a live to ground fault and the ground isn't connected. This would leave the USB ports at full mains potential. This would be the same on any earthed equipment though. I'm surrounded by examples. Soldering iron, audio mixers, guitar amps, oscilloscopes, appliances, the trusty old treadmill with its anti-shock hack. I'd still like to see a resistor in the path. The weight on this adapter is heavy, over a kilogram with the cord. This is not a travel adapter. It is too big and too heavy unless you are a traveling video editing team, and then it's probably pretty good. Although three prime 100 watt adapters is still way lighter and smaller for travel. In comparing with others, the weight is just in a class of its own. It's really a bit heavier than it should be for 300 watts. In terms of comparison with other adapters, this is a big adapter. In terms of comparison with the 165 watt and 200 watt adapters, the size makes some sense. Comparing with the compact 100 watt offerings, it is a little on the larger side. I actually think it is impressive to fit this many watts into this case from an engineering perspective, but it's shocking size and weight for ultimately what is a USB power adapter. Okay, and finally, I looked at the long-term output of this power adapter because I had a feeling on this one that it wasn't going to be able to hold up for very long. And this is the downside of this adapter. I run that Prime adapter for hours and the Bassius adapters and the Roserin and didn't break or drop the power level yet. They got hotter than the sun, but they work for now. This one, however, protects after half an hour at 300 watts. The power level appears to drop to about 100 watts functionally until things cool down. The case never got that hot, but internally it just couldn't get that heat out. Once it got hot, it stayed hot for a long time afterwards. This seems pretty similar to other power banks too from Ugreen. None of these chargers are really rated for continuous duty, but this one less so than others. Time to compare the data. I haven't tested any adapters at 300 watts, but I've got a few at 200 or so. When comparing the idle data with others, this Ugreen actually falls near the bottom of the list. And remember, this is almost two of the Satoshi adapters at the same idle power, so this is impressively low idle power usage for a power adapter of this size. The power level means it meets the DOE requirements. However, Europe is more strict and it doesn't meet the EU requirements for idle power usage. On the idle graph, the Satoshi 165 is right at the same point as the Ugreen 300 watt. If you need to power lots of high power devices, this may be more efficient option compared with the others here. I still have that Wotobius in here at over two watts. Why so much? It's still powering my lights though. When comparing the overall data with others, these adapters again span a wide range of values. The new Ugreen, of course, uses the most power, but it does use the most power the most cleanly. So it is a very effective power consumer. It is efficient and is good at delivering lots of watts. Would I use it for a phone? No, it isn't great below 40 watts. On the average power consumption graph, Ugreen is the top of the chart for quality and the power used. These top tier performance adapters also in the chart are good at using power, but the Ugreen is ever so slightly better. It is nice to see improvement. Let's talk about value. I picked a bunch of larger adapters to compare to for value, and at full price, this adapter represents fairly low value. Not quite as bad as the 200 watt adapter from Ugreen. I noticed it seems to be perpetually on sale though, so for $200, I arbitrarily put this in the 230 volt line just to show the difference. This puts it in the average value range compared with the other power adapters that also perform well in testing. This is just slightly better than the Satoshi 165 watt, which means it is at least competitive with the market. It looks like they did some research to find the price point for this adapter. Considering you are getting three 100 watt adapters basically, then it starts to make more sense. Okay, well, that was a trip. This is a good power adapter. I am finally glad to see that Ugreen was able to get a safety listing on the product for this market. It is very welcome to get a new product and not have to wait to find out if it'll be on the list in the future. The performance is also top tier. This is the best performance adapter on the database. If you need to power a bunch of laptops, this is the way to go. It still isn't perfect though. 
They didn't include higher EPR modes that should have been possible, and the adapter has no option to do 100 watts on three ports as even share. The PPS modes are limited to about 4 amps too, so asking for 5 amps in PPS mode will trigger a reset. This means 25 watt Samsung fast charging. The power performance is great though. The DC side is clean with low ripple and the voltages were well within tolerances. The AC side also looked good. The power factor correction circuit is extremely effective in this device and maintains a high efficiency while operating. This means this is the new power quality score champion for USB power adapters. But time is a factor. At full load, this adapter has to dissipate 28 watts in a sealed case, and it just can't do that. That's a lot of watts in a sealed box, so it does shut down at full load at about a half hour. The power seems to be about 100 watts until things cool back down. With all this thermal mass in this thing, it takes a long time to cool back down. The adapter didn't break though, it protected itself and recovered just fine. This is getting into needing a fan territory though. Okay, well there's only one adapter in the 300 watt category, but overall, out of all the adapters I've tested, which is a lot, this is the best performance one. From 40 watts to 300 watts, it is a good choice. If you are only charging a phone, then move along. This is the power adapter for power users. Okay, time to apply the sticker. Only one this week. I found some big stickers for this one. Big adapter, big sticker. This is tested and on the database so you can look at how it did. It's big and it's heavy, but it's also surprisingly good for performance for half an hour. I can't say that I need an adapter this size. The 165 watt does everything I need. So leave it below if you have an idea of the use cases for this thing. Thanks for watching. Next week, I will be looking at the Shark Geek Storm 2 power bank. This has been a pretty highly requested item, so I finally decided to give it a look. It's so expensive. Check my website for upcoming videos. There's a schedule of release dates. I have too many more of these adapters and many more videos in the future. Goodbye.